My name is Don Dixon and I want to thank you for joining me today. We're going to continue our discussion on weather and water conditions and how it affects the movement and migration of fish. Uh, the last time we talked, we introduced you to the term cold front. We talked about how cold front's going to be our guide uh, to interpret what the fishing conditions might be on any given day. So let's take a look at a typical cold front effect. Keep in mind, the passing of a cold front is going to make things tough. And the reason is light. So let's get started. First day, cold front goes through. The normal reaction of the school of big fish will to drop deep. And they will drop deeper than their normal sanctuary zone. Now in this diagram our sanctuary zone will be somewhere around 35 feet or so just up from the little drop off there maybe at 38 feet they could have maybe even a little shallower 30 32 feet would have been the sanctuary zone before the cold front passed and once it passed those fish drop downstairs and if the depth's available like we're showing here that depth would be probably on a good average 60 feet that's the school of big fish. Now there might be a couple of fish, a couple of the bigger fish will stop and hang out for a minute or two around that 38 foot drop off. And the smaller fish, the little guys, uh, will drop down to maybe 20 feet. And that will be the first day after the passing of a cold front. Now the second day after that front passes through. A little later on in the afternoon, you're liable to see some what we call snowball clouds start to appear. It's really bright blue and still washed out, but a few little snowball clouds might begin to appear. Turn around, I don't see any here today. <laughs> or I'd point to one. But at any rate, we'll probably also have a little drop in the wind by the second day. But as far as the fish are concerned, you might have some of those smaller fish who were at 20 feet the day before. There may be a few of those fish jump up to the stump there at 15 feet, maybe. You may even have one or two of the adult fish stick their head up to the drop-off. But that would be very short and then right back downstairs. The fishing today, second day after a front, basically fish activity, fish movement, nil. It's not happening. It's still a very, very difficult fishing situation. And again, the main culprit is light. Not temperature, not oxygen, not pH, none of that stuff. The main culprit is light. They just can't adjust. Their only salvation from that bright light, keep in mind, they don't have any eyelids. They can't close their eyes. They've got no sunglasses to wear. And in Florida, they tell everybody, you live here, you better wear sunglasses. You go outside, wear sunglasses. All of the eye doctors will tell you the same thing. Protect your eyes. Think how the fish feel. <laughs> they got no sunglasses. They can't close their eyes. They can't turn away from it. The only thing they can do is to drop deeper. Because the deeper you go, the less light penetration there is. And finally, you will reach a spot downstairs where the light is gone. And now the fish has uh, arrived at that stable condition, which he has to have. It's not a mystery. It's the way it is. Now, let's go to day three. On the third day, uh, you will normally see a slight increase in temperature. Temperature, air temperature is going up. Uh, you'll start to see some cirrus clouds forming. And cirrus clouds means there's some moisture coming in. Things are getting back to the way that we kind of like it by the third day. You also maybe will see some haze that day. Now the mass of the fish on this third day, they pretty much have moved back to their original sanctuary zone. But I can say on that third day, there will be no mass migration of the big fish. It won't, won't happen. But the effect of the passing of that cold front is now over. And from this point forward, the movements and migrations would go back to normal. But to carry the effects of weather, 
in this situation. We need to take a look at the next couple of days to understand it even better. Okay, so here we go to the fourth day. On the fourth day after the passing of that cold front, you're going to have uh, some rising temperatures. Uh, you're going to have some more cirrus clouds showing up in the sky, more and more moisture showing up. There's going to probably be more haze. And how about the fish today? Well, you would probably, if you're on the water in the morning, you probably have a movement of fish in the morning sometime in the morning hours. You would have, maybe the big fish might uh, make a movement up to the 20 foot break line. And the smaller fish would maybe move up to the stump, maybe move into the weed line, maybe even some fish scatter in the weeds, but pretty good movement. And could last as long as 30 minutes before they revert back to their normal sanctuary. And the yearling fish probably wouldn't drop any further back than 15 feet. But the fourth day, now we've had a movement, a normal movement. Later on that afternoon, you would probably have a second movement of the fish. This time, it may last a little bit longer, but the big fish probably get to 20 feet, maybe even a few move as shallow as 15 feet. And the smaller fish would really be up there in the weeds, rock pile to the weeds, scattering along in the weeds, in and around the weeds. And that uh, movement would last 30 minutes or more before the fish turn around and move back to the normal sanctuary zone. That's day four. Okay, the fifth day after the front passes through, as long as the weather hadn't changed, you're gonna get a morning movement, which pretty much is gonna be a repetition of the day before. But then around noontime, and this is a typical situation, around noontime you'll see a second layer of clouds maybe moving in. Some of them being dark clouds underneath all of the cirrus. And all of a sudden at 3.30 or so that afternoon, here comes another movement of fish. And this time, the fish will move maybe even right on past uh, uh, the stump and all the way up to the rock pile. Maybe the two biggest, two or three biggest lunkers that are in that uh, school of adults might stop at the stump. But you'll get the mass of the fish all the way up to the rock pile. And of course, the smaller fish scattering all along up in the weeds and all of that. And this movement of fish could last as long as an hour. And you just <laughs> having the time of your life. And the reason is the weather condition has allowed for all this to take place. And we're having a lot of success on that day five. The second layer of clouds that came in that I referred to, that second layer of clouds offers a filtering, an additional filtering effect that really creates a terrific light condition. It blocks out all the bad stuff and allows those fish to really get shallow and stay for quite some time. This is the kind of condition we're looking for. How about day six? We, well, we have heavy threatening clouds and impending rain. Mid-morning, the rain starts and the fish are already up in the shallows going nuts. <laughs> They're biting like crazy. We're just having a ball. And that kind of action pretty much would stay that way all day long, all day. You get some peak period maybe around 10 in the morning, another peak period maybe 4.35 in the afternoon, but you pretty much have all of that great action all day long. And then it's over. And of course the storm ends up going through and day seven you wake up clear, bright blue, washed out and here we go again fish have already dropped to their deep deep water sanctuary post frontal 60 feet if it's available and if it's not they're going to be as deep as they can get and they're going to be dormant i want to get you to a point where you can actually say regardless of the weather and the water conditions I catch fish every time I go out. And you can. You can. You really can. But we got some work to put in first. Remember, like Buck said, I've only known a few great fishermen. Known a lot of good fishermen, a few great. But in each and every case, these people put in the time, they put in the study, 
So as Buck says, if you want to be one of those good ones or one of those great ones, you've got to put in some time and effort. You've got to fish some different waters. You've got to put in some study. Uh, and that's what we're doing. You and I are doing this thing together. And my goal is to get you to a point where no matter what the weather and the water conditions are, you're going to catch fish every time you go out. Some days you're only going to catch a few. Other days you're going to slaughter them. But each and every time you go out to catch fish, then you get into that category of one of those really good ones. So that's what we're shooting for. We've got a lot more to talk about. But as I close off today talking about this cold front, I want to leave you with this. All species of fish, not just the bass, all species of fish, freshwater and saltwater, are affected by cold fronts and light conditions that are created by these cold fronts. All fish are affected by it, some to a greater degree than others. The one that's affected the most is the largemouth bass. It's the reason we're using that as a study fish. So with all that being said, thanks for being with me today. I hope you learned a little something. I appreciate you being here. Like us on Facebook, if you would. And follow us on Instagram and be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube if you haven't already done it. We've got a lot more uh, coming your way. And during the summer months, we're going to do quite a bit of fishing as well. And I'm going to be showing you some underwater stuff. So I'm looking forward to everything we've got lined up in the future. And I'll see you the next time.